Right guys, hope you're all doing well. We've got another little project to do today and just a couple of little bit in about, bit in about jobs on this in this house. We've got radiator here to, to swap. We just took the old one off. Um, new single going in, 800 by 600 high. Uh, new valves. Also, this drain off is absolutely knackered. I can't get it out. So, try sweat that tee off, sock it up, and we'll put a drain off lock shield on just to make life a lot easier. And it just looks a little bit better. I don't like it when they put a little uh, drain off coming off the pipe there. It's a bit shite if you ask me. And then upstairs, We've got a tower rail to swap, which is hanging off the wall. So that one's coming off, we've got an anthracite going in, hopefully light for light, should go straight onto the old pipe work. New valves, obviously, and then new tap going on here, which should be straightforward, we've got isolation valves there, um, just a straight swap. And then I'm doing a bit of electric work today, I've got a fan to swap over, I think it should be just a straight swap, I'm hoping, never had to swap one before. So, we'll crack on and get this radiator downstairs hung. Right, so this one's for more apprentices. It's how I hang a radiator. So what I do is I centre my, um, when I'm working to existing pipe work, I centre it to my valves, roughly there. Then just mark up on the wall, centre of your brackets. Find it a lot easier that way. And then what I'll do, it's a bit hard to do. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll put you back down so you can see. And then what you need to do is Put your bracket up to the back of the radiator, like so, and get it on. And then measure from the floor to your top of your bracket. What am I doing here? Which is... Call it 19 inch. 19 inches, um, I like to add an inch on so off the skirting, so I'll go 20 inches up, mark there, mark there, I'll level my line across then, and then get your brackets. This is a single radiator, so we go on the deeper side. So put the short side on the wall like so, mark up either side, drill, drill, plug, screw. Easy as that, easy as that. The reason I do it that way is because some people measure from the bottom of the rad the radiator to the bottom of the bracket, but then you work it all low down below yourself. If you do it at the top, it's just a little easy and less strain on your back. You're not bent down as much. It was a big radiator, anyhow. But this was not too bad. So we'll get that level lined across. You can use la laser levels, but by the time I've set a laser level up, to be honest, I've marked it up already with a normal level. So... I might not have to plug and screw this one, it might line up perfect. Probably not, but we'll see. So, short side bracket, because it's a single radiator. If it was a double, we'd go on the short side outwards and the, and the bigger side flat to the wall. Right, so with that, them all on now, you have these little, white little clips which just clip on. And basically what that is to do is to stop the metal of the bracket and the metal of the radiator from rubbing. And when it's heating up, sometimes it can make a clicking noise because the metal on metal is rubbing. So that's to stop that if you didn't know. That on the one there. Now we can get the radiator on. Right, so they're all on. Where's my level gone? Put the level on top, make sure you bang on, which we are. 
Happy days. So I need to make the radiator valves up now. I'm just waiting for the uh, drain off one to get delivered. So we'll get this side made up and connected. While we're waiting, I'm gonna do this with Loctite and paste. I'm not gonna use um, Rapid Blue. I've started, I'm, I'm going off using Rapid Blue on white radiators. It's, it's a bit, it's a bit messy. It gets on the white, you can stain it. It's just more hassle than it's worth sometimes. Uh, so I'll just use Loctite 55 and then just stick to using Rapid Blue on maybe like designer radiators and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll get that made up and then we can uh, address this situation. Eight, eight wraps of Loctite 55 and then just a light coverage of paste. It doesn't need the paste to be honest, but belts and braces and all that. off any excess then get a tissue on that shortly and get it cleaned down and get our valve on Replace the nut olive. People have been asking me about these um, olive cutters. They are from Ox. I can't remember how much they are. Really good for 15 mil splitting olives. They do have a 22 mil size as well. Um, I think Monument do one, Rothenberg do one, but they're all the same basically. Put it over, squeeze, and it splits the olive, it just comes straight off. Snip that and then take it back off. And just put a bit of a, a bit of paste on there, just to um, help it bond. Obviously, we'll cl clean the excess off. It's messy with paste. Ends up all over your trousers. I say every time I'm going to get a new pair. Of, like, every time I get a pair of trousers, I'm not going to wipe paste or silicone over. Them, but first job I go to, guaranteed, I'll end up. Wiping it over it. There we go. So, what I'm gonna do now, while we're waiting for this valve to come, is get this taken off. So, let's protect this skirting board where we can.
I'll do five alarms. <laughs> Up a window and let a, a door and let that um, go off. Right, so let's clean that down. We'll get this cleaned down and then we can socket that up and a bit of a then go straight onto the new valve. Bloody fire alarm! So what I'm going to have to do is heat that up and as I'm heating it up, put it on to just a couple of little ridges on the solder. Oh, it might do. Have a look. Oh no, it's going. Let them out there. Yes. Never mind. Ignore that. So, do heat my mat back of there, and then we can get this soldered up. Need another pair of hands. <laughs> That'll do there. Like so. not the neatest in the world but I imagine he's gonna be paid in this than pipes anyway I had to just get as much soldering as I can unfortunately just I wanted to make sure it was definitely soldered didn't it wasn't running out which I think it did at first but then it, it seemed to take this bit of paint is where the old T was they're not painted behind it obviously that's not me <laughs> before anyone starts saying I've ruined the skirting board so what I'm gonna do now is get a clear out because I made a right mess here clear it out clean it up hopefully in about five minutes the um the valve should turn up and we can get that valve made up and that radiator done and then we could just move upstairs. Just realised I forgot to start filming. <laughs> valve finally turned up. Get that all made up. Tip for you as well when fitting these sort of valves with the drain off on. Once you fit it, make sure you get the right size. Turn it off. So a lot of them come turned on. The amount of times I've fit these valves and forgot to check whether it's turned off or on, and I filled the system up and what's peed out. It's even more annoying when you put any bit of it. That's all on there now. Get on there. All done and dusted. So. We've just finished tidying up here. We've backed up already. Um, tidy this up, give it all a good clean down, and then head upstairs and make a start on the tower rail, I think. Before I do the radiator, I thought I'm going to do the bit above first, then if anything drops down, it's not going to damage the new radiator. So, electric fan. Must have tool when working on any electrics is a volt stick. Put your pen in there. You know that light there. When it lights, the end lights up red, or depending on which one you've got, this is a Regan one. When it lights up red, like so, if I turn the isolator back on, it means there's the live power going to it there. So, turn that back off. Double check, we've got no live there. So we've got, our grey is our neutral, our brown is our live, and our black with the brown sleeving on is our switch live so get it disconnected do everything on this channel not just plumbing did flooring last week and we've got electrics this week all right take that off there right we need a van so take that um ducting off there get it onto the new one so that's gonna slip slip onto there and then we can get that fixed into place we need to have that lug there to the bottom. Hoping my cable's gonna be long enough. If not, I might have to make a hole for it to connect into, which I don't want, really want to do. Let's see, let's see if I can twist that. Um, but yeah, we'll get that taken out, get the new one in place and get it wired up. All right, so that's that in. Turns out, you can turn it around, it will clip in still, which is a bonus. So three fixing screws wired up. Let's get the power back on, make sure Working. Is it working? Yeah, here we go. Bit of delay in it. Pushed it. We've got a working fan now. So, 
get the uh, cover back on. There we go. Try to get it square at least. There we go. All done. It's cushy. I'm now a qualified electrician, so if you need any electric works, let me know. No joking. Right, get this um, done, get it whipped off. The, I'm led to believe the valves are already turned off, so there shouldn't be any water in the pipe uh, radiator already. Um, Rad all made up, ready to go. Just, oh, say it's all made up, I haven't put the valves on yet. Valves need to go on, but we're just going on to the existing. Unfortunately, I did say last week that I didn't like to go into plastic for compression. But I ain't got much choice here unless I put a socket on there. But everyone's told me that I can do it. Everyone said that compression's fine. It is fine as long as there's a metal insert in there. So we'll make sure there's an insert in there. This one's not leaked, so we should be okay. It's just sometimes certain things just don't feel right to an individual. Um, and comp compression on plastic doesn't for me. But sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So we'll get this swapped. Get it hung and um, yeah, we'll show you how I mark it up like I did the radiator downstairs because how I mark up tower rails is slightly different and I think personally is the, I do it the easiest and best way for a new starter. Some people really struggle when they're marking these up but I'll show you how. A bit tight to film in here but basically it's how I go about marking my radiator up. So important thing is get it made up Get your valves on so you know exactly where your valves are going, where your brackets are going, etc. So first thing, first measurement I want to know is from the centre of my valve to the centre of my bottom bracket. So I've made a line on the wall here. You just see it there. Um, that's where my centre of my valve is going to be once it's lifted up into place. So from there to there, made a mark. And then... I've found my center of my valve, my valves, which was, it's a 450 radiator, so I've got 200 um, centers for the, for the valve centers. So 200, and then what I've measured then is how far apart I want my brackets. So usually it's about a foot, but I've gone about 30, I've gone 32 centimeters on this one. So 16 centimeters either side, put a little pencil mark, level line that across then. So I've got my first two marks. Then, Measure from the centre of that bracket to the centre of your top bracket, which takes me from, from there up to there. I've then run a level line straight up and done the same again. 16 either side, level line across, and know exactly where my screw holes want to be. So I've put them in, screwed it ready to go. So we'll get it all on the wall now and get our connections made for the radiator. Right, so that's all in now. And piped up. Like I said, I'm gonna have to, I've gone plastic because I had no really other option. I didn't want to start messing about with the floor. It's, yeah, it's one of them. Never mind. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I've turned these valves off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up the system. It might sound a bit backwards that I'm leaving this valve, ice, this radiator isolated. All the reason for it is I can pressure test the, the valves there, pressure test the radiator downstairs, make sure there's no leaks. If I'm happy there's no leaks, what I'm going to do then... Is put some inhibitor in. The last thing I want to do is put an inhibitor in now, realize, oh shit, there's a leak. I have to drain the system down and I've wasted five quid or whatever it is, or 10 quid on, a, on a, some inhibitor, depending on what you use. There's a bit of a tip for you. I just, I know I'm not really testing the valves at the top, I'm not testing the connections to the radiator, but I'd like to think that I have confidence in myself that they won't leak and the um, jet lube and the Loctite will be enough to keep that tight. I've tightened the fittings at the top, so it should be all good. So we'll head downstairs, pressurize the boiler up and then get some inhibitor in once I'm happy. Right, so I'm happy now, it's, nothing's leaking. So let's get this uh, inhibitor in, pour it straight to your tower rail and then when you're heating on it'll circulate around the system. Right, that's spill it. I can buy little funnels for these, but I ain't got one. I did make myself one, but it ended up corroding. So, using it for cleaner, flood, uh, any bit of leak sealer and everything. 
Oh, yeah, <laughs> I think all chemicals combined and it corroding the uh, the copper. So we'll get that um, bung back in there. What have I done with the spanner? Oh, there it is. There we go. So, head downstairs, we'll get the system filled back up, get the heating on. Um, we'll let that run while we're doing the tap. We've got tap swap na next. But first thing, I need to try and work out how the hell we get this drawer off here. Because they never make it easy, do they? It'll be, it'll be a pull and tug and... Or there'll be a clip or a screw underneath, but we'll work it out and then we can get in and get that, get them swapped. That should be a nice easy one with the isolators there. Hopefully the uh, isolators don't leak. Right, so tapping, all done and dusted. Swapped over. Well done. Straight forward, just got to get the draw back in now. Heating's all tested. Work, it's getting nice and hot. So yeah, all done and dusted.